Good day to you. I know this is a weird thing to look at, the first thing when you're looking at an instructor video, but I'm going to try the split screen again today as we take on our final chapter in the course talking about a form of entertainment that you may not have even known existed, even though it is the largest producer in the world. In the world. You could be forgiven. You could be forgiven if you thought that Hollywood movies was the biggest industry for movie making in the world because you grew up in America, right? And you don't really hear about the country we're talking about today, which is India. And we're talking about Bollywood today. So I'm gonna blend that in also with showing you the downtown of Mazatlan. This is El Centro. And we'll be walking towards the Central Market. I know you may not be able to hear me the best during this, but it's a sacrifice I wanna try so that we can show you one last glimpse of culture because culture after all is what ends up is what ends up in our media. It forms the basis of our content. So I'm walking through a, a cathedral square right now. It's lined with shoe shines, Mexican shoe shines, very cheap, just like everything else down here. When compared with spending the dollar, it's only two dollars to get your shoes signed. And you can hear the church or cathedral bells right now as we're walking past. Mexico is a very noisy noisy country there's sounds all the time coming from around have to wait for the bells to finish there's a glimpse of the church there's the square that we just walked through very typical in mexican life as is the case in european life to have a town square a place where people can gather a place where people can relax it's a public space it's a space for everybody. So I think it does help to have some background on India like we've done for the other countries that we've discussed. And you know, India was occupied for 300 years by the British. Yeah, the British colonized India and occupied it for 300 years. That's gonna come to play a little bit later when we talk about British actors in Bollywood films. I also want to make mention that India still has the caste system, C-A-S-T-E. That's a system that you're born into a certain class. We call it class, they call it caste. It's an economic, social caste that you're born into. And, and generally speaking, you're not allowed to marry outside of that caste. I was speaking to a professor at ESU, Beth Sockman. I don't know if you know her and she's of Indian heritage and her, her dad married outside of his caste twice. He married somebody who was in a lower caste and also that same person was a different religion. She was Catholic, which is considered another caste. So when we consider India, we do have to remember it has what we would consider to be some rigidity as far as people intermingling with each other based on that caste system. And also, we want to mention that India has a huge population, second biggest population in the world behind China. So it's got a lot of people. Actually, India is suffering right now with COVID because of the COVID outbreaks. All right, so here's the central market. We're going to be walking in there. I don't know whether I'll be able to take my mask off on in there, but I want to show you some of the things that you see. If you've ever been in an outdoor market, you won't, you won't be surprised by some of what we see, but if if you haven't, you're going to see some things that you haven't seen before because when we shop in the U.S., normally we buy groceries at a store long after they've been processed. We never see what a chicken looks like, for example. We never see what a cow looks like. We just buy the end product. Here you're going to see the real thing. This, by the way, is a little seafood stand. You can get oysters there. You can get clams. Very cheap. Lots of hot sauces. Mexican put hot sauces from that chili pepper on almost everything and I'm just going to show you a couple stores outside of the market here so you can get an idea of what is for sale as far as souvenirs and everyday items yeah so back to India now so India has this tremendous industry called Bollywood and much like we've discussed in other sections of this course 
Bollywood went through a period where it was inundated by foreign content, namely US content. But actually Bollywood has come back very strong to the extent that it's producing upwards of a thousand films a year compared to Hollywood's 800 films a year. And Bollywood films are shown all over the world. If I can find a place selling DVDs here, I don't know if I can, DVDs aren't really sold anymore. I bet if we look through a box, we're gonna see some Bollywood films here in Mexico. All right, so I did wanna show you this place. This is a Liquato stand. And you come here and you get a smoothie with oranges or grapefruit there. Or you can have one of these juices, that's horchata. That's uh, made from a plant. You've got uh, pineapple, watermelon, guayaba, lemon, cebada, jamaica. It's really, really delicious juices that are naturally sweet. If you buy a smoothie in the United States or an icy at Wawa, odds are what's providing that sweet flavor is white sugar. Not the case here in Mexico. They use the fruit to give you the sugar. All right, let's go into the market here. I'm gonna have to get my temperature taken. Hola, buenas tardes. Gracias. Oh, look at these beautiful cheeses there. This cheese right here is from a local town. Looks very different, doesn't it? Here's some of the vegetable stands. Everybody's got a mask on, so I don't want to take mine off. Bunch of sandals in there. All right, here if you want to bring home a treat for your family, here are some of your options instead of packaged candy goods. What we're looking at here is coconut soaked in some kind of sugar, maple sugar. These are bananas, same thing there. Now we're gonna walk over to the meats. So if you see that shirt right there, it says Mazatlan, that's a baseball shirt. One of the uh, American cultural influences is baseball here. Baseball is played in only two states in all of Mexico, and one of those states is the state of Sinaloa, where we are here, and they have the playoffs. Usually when we come down here at Christmas, very exciting. So here's a meat counter, fresh meat. If you're not a meat eater, I apologize. Cutting meat up. Okay. Continue on. What I'm looking for is one with the pig's head. They sell every part of the meat here. Here's the stomach of the pig. There's some of the hooves of pigs. More pieces. I know it's uh, difficult to look at. If, you're, if you love animals, which I do. But I want to show you the realism of a market. There we are right there. They use every part of the pig when they cook, including the head. Back in here, we have the chicken section. They feed their chicken marigolds, you know, the weed, so that it turns the skin yellow and gives it a better taste. Okay, now we're coming to the fish section here. You're gonna see the most important fish that's sold here, that one right there, it's called marlin. And also they sell tuna here. One of those is tuna, actually I think that's tuna and the marlin is the brighter red one. Just look how fresh that, if you're a fish eater, it doesn't get any fresher than this. In fact, this morning, I went down the beach and caught a couple fish and came back and cooked them for breakfast. There's some red snapper, some shrimp. This is the Spanish mackerel with the yellow dots. 
I know I'm probably getting a little more detail than you want here if you're not a fish person. But I am going to make my way to the outside of the market now. Here's some cactus. Nopal cactus. N-O-P-A-L, Nopal. Very good in an omelet. Delicious. Very good for you too. And I'm going to exit over this direction. <laughs> One of the most uh, excellent things about shopping in Mexico is you don't need to buy a pre-packaged bag full of stuff. If you want one hamburger bun, you can buy one hamburger bun. You don't have to buy a package of six. And that goes for the dog food right here and the rice. You just scoop it out. If you want butter, they scoop it out of a giant vat. These vats right there, they're full of butter. You don't have to buy four sticks if you don't want to. Four sticks of butter. Buy what you like. Right, I'm going to exit out this way. How are you, sir? face? Ask for me uh, estudiantes. Yo es el maestro. Yo, I'm, el mercado es muy importante. Muy bueno. Si. Ah. Si. Su tienda, si. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, I like it. Are oh, you looking for something special, something? Uh, I always buy from here, so. Oh, okay. Right now, I'm just showing them the market. All right. Gracias, amigo. Yeah, que lo vaya bien. Okay? Adios. Adios. Those mangoes. Ooh. Making my way out of the market here. You also have little restaurants in here, like this one. You can sit down and have a ceviche. Fresh shrimp or fish, there are two types. Salida, exit. There is the Mazatlan baseball jersey again. The name of the team is the Venados. Deer, a lot of deer were originally in Mazatlan before it was settled. And the market ends with a bunch of gift shops here as I step outside and you can see all the buses. I'm going to find a quiet place so I can continue on with Bollywood. So uh, let me just get through this noisy area. Did you see that vehicle? That's called a Pullmania. There's one now. They have Volkswagen engines in them. And they're really fun to ride around in. They're taxis. The Pullmania. That's uh, Spanish for pneumonia. It's a joke, because if you get in one of those late at night, it can be quite chilly. Did, did you hear music playing in that one that just went by? You hear some banda. Up top in the market, these are all restaurants. When I say restaurant, it's not what you think. It's basically one room with a stove and a table. <laughs> most of them anyhow and so you sit down and the person who is serving you is also the cook <laughs> and she's gonna make a absolutely scrumptious meal I can assure you of that all right so I have a semi quiet place now I'm gonna camp out here and continue on so yeah just to put into uh, some quantities for how big I'll point you down this way so you can continue to see some action uh, to tell you how big the Bollywood film industry is, it's got a, an audience of 10 million people worldwide. It's the biggest audience in the world. They're producing a thousand films. And the industry went through the biggest changes as far as reform in the year 2000, where the Indian government de designated filmmaking as an industry rather than as an art form. And once the Indian government designated film as an industry, then it was eligible for all kinds of governmental support to boost it up. So uh, actually the year 1998 is when it was declared an industry, but 2000, right around the year 2000, that's where we saw the industry change for the better. And when we talk about films that are produced, they're not produced in just one language, like in the United States, almost all films are produced in English. Some may be produced in uh, Spanish, but very few. 
in India, they are producing films in 40 different languages, 40 different languages, including the main language of India, which is Hindi, H-I-N-D-I. I'm gonna walk around a little bit more so you get to maybe see a little bit more. And also films that are Bollywood films are normally three hours long, three hours, yeah. So once again, the format of two hours, that would be an American thing, right? That was exported around the world and, and the three hour format is an Indian thing being exported around the world. And there's a certain genre of movies. Here's a pharmacy. Uh, no, it's not a pharmacy. I don't know what it is. Music everywhere in Mexico. And of course that's an American song. Babylon, I think is the name of it. So there is a certain genre of Indian food movies called masala movies. If you've ever eaten Indian food and it's hard to find in the US, delicious, a lot of yogurt and Indian food and chili peppers. The genre is called masala because that's a sauce. It's a mixture of many things, a masala sauce, chicken masala, you ever have it? So a masala genre in Bollywood is combining action, drama, comedy, and emotion. And you do find a parallel with with uh, Mexico there because masala using food to describe uh, another cultural art form in the, in the case of film. Um, remember we were talking about the chili pepper? I learned that chili is a big part of the language and metaphorical language in Spanish. If you want somebody to give you the truth, to be direct with you, in Mexico you say, habla mi chili. Habla mi chili means speak to me chili. Speak to me directly. All right, so let's move on to some other categories of information we want to talk about here. Next up, we're going to talk about the theatrical side of Bollywood. So it typically costs about $2 to go to a theater and see a movie. And very cheap in Mexico, too. You go to see a movie in Mexico. They have movie houses down here where you, you sit and you order a meal. And they bring you out nachos or pizza or a taco while you're eating and it's very cheap u.s ticket prices i don't even know what they're at these days but probably around 15 bucks and then you buy popcorn and coke and they're all overpriced as well and you end up dropping a lot of money when you go to see a mexican film uh film in america i should say two bucks in india and movie stars are stars in india just like they are in the united states that's very similar they're idolized they have blogs and fans and they endorse fashion lines and they are looked at as people who uh, have a status in society that should be considered when big subjects are discussed. We talk, movie stars are stars, that's where that comes from. And the way that films were produced, theatrically speaking, there's a view of the ocean, you can see it way down at the bottom of the road here. So I make my way around El Centro Mazatlan. There is a, a couple theories at play in filmmaking. Did you know that? That filmmaking draws on theories? Yeah, if you ever want to take a film class, we offer one in our department where you can discuss these series. It's called Intro to Film Study. We also offer three more classes as well. But in the case of Bollywood, one of the theories that they're using is hybridity theory. Hybridity theory, you know what hybrid means. It means a combo, right? So in this case, hybridity theory refers to a lack of adherence to social norms. A lack of adherence to social norms and it's speaking about how Indians are all over the world and that is what much of Bollywood is aimed at it's aimed at the diaspora Do you know that word it's people who leave a country it's aimed at the diaspora of Indians uh, when we think about Indians in the US we think of them as owning motels right that's that's where they go and so hybridity refers to not adhering to local customs like I'm not adhering to a local custom right now I've got a sleeveless shirt on and I'm wearing shorts. I don't know if you noticed, but every almost every Mexican male like these two guys here, doesn't matter how hot it is, they're wearing pants, right? It's it's probably a holdover from the uh, from Spanish colonial era um, and con more conservative values when it comes to dress. But that's that's what hybridity is. It's ignoring local customs. It's ignoring yeah, ignoring local customs. If you want to if you want to stay it that way to do your own thing and. And we can say the Indians, when they're abroad, that's that's what they do, right? They still, many of them, they still uh, continue Indian traditions. They don't adopt American style of clothing. And, and I'm being very sweeping in my generalizations here, but 
but that's what that's referring to. There's another look at the bay there of Mazatlan, way down at the bottom of the hill. I'm going to start circling back towards the market. So for many of the people who are living abroad who are originally from India, Bollywood is more than just a, an escape or entertainment. It's a way of life. It's how they stay in touch and continue to live as Indians. Even though, here's another example. See this guy painting here? Sorry to interrupt here. See his little paints here? If you go into a store to buy paint in the US, you got two choices, a quart or a gallon. So what happens if you need something in between, like two, two quarts? You can buy two quarts, but most people are gonna buy the gallon because it's cheaper. And then you end up throwing the paint away. So there's a lot of wastage that goes on just by the nature of the way things are packaged in the US. All right, so Bollywood, yeah, just hammering away at that theme one more time. It's it's about, these are, this is volcanic rock, by the way. Sorry to keep interrupting here. So Bollywood uh, is a way of life. Um, people live for Bollywood who are no longer in, in India. In India. And I want you to think if you've ever traveled abroad, what's, what's that American entertainment that you just have to have while you're away to help you get over your homesickness? That's what we're talking about here. All right, so that brings us to our last category of information for today, which is gonna be post-colonialization. Sorry, post post corporatization post corporatization in other words in other words after the year 2000 when film became an industry that's what we're going to wrap up with right after i show you this tortilla shop the tortillas everything in mexico those tortillas still made the way that aztec the aztec peoples made them 500 years ago in that little tortilleria let's see if i can get a glimpse of the inside of them There's a machine that makes them. Hey, Daddy. Beautiful Mexican sandals. All right, so after the corporatization, what kind of a bus is that? Got no windows and a bunch of open seating. After uh, corporatization, a lot of foreign capital was allowed to flow into the country and also capital was allowed to flow out of India into other filmmaking industries. So the industry, the film industry grew because of the injection of foreign capital, including from the U.S., including from Hollywood. And it worked both ways. Steven Spielberg, he made movies with a lot of in money from Indian banks. Michael Douglas, another American actor, same thing. Let's take a look at this fruit cart. And then there's all these little stands. They all specialize in different things. Tacos. See that tacos cabeza? That's the head of a taco. Hola, amigo. Vampiros. Frijoles. Beans and rice. Amazing. Some of the big films that were co-productions, that's how we've referred to them before when we've talked about other countries, that's really what we're talking about here is globalization, right? Different finance, financial sources from different countries joining together to produce projects that are of interest to both countries or if there are more countries. Some of the big films, let me know, you can let yourself know if you know these films, uh, Big Boss, Raw Star, Comedy Nights. All of these films have British actors. Why do they have British actors? Because there's still a very close connection between India and the former colonial power of Britain. A lot of English is actually spoken in India because of that past history. Also, after post-corporatization, we started to have the relaxation of certain norms in Indian filmmaking. So basically this breaks down to sexual freedoms that they didn't have before. And, and even promiscuity. So, uh, and that term is a loaded term, right? Here's some fresh shri shrimp sold by the buckets. Um, so basically sexual freedoms and, and more showing of the body. Here's some of the nuts that you can get in Mexico and seeds, beautiful nuts and seeds. And we can also say that that's a reverse influence of Hollywood, right? Because Hollywood is all about sex, 
in films. And then I also want to mention that the biggest sport in India is cricket. Uh, I guess it's most closely similar to baseball. Very different though. Uh, they're absolutely crazy about cricket in India. So Bollywood, Bollywood has teamed up with India. Sorry, has teamed up with cricket and the cricket league to produce matches. So when you see a, whew, let me grab this space here. I told you Mexico is a noisy place. So every time there's uh, one of these matches, they have a pageantry and a show beforehand that is produced by Bollywood. I guess we can say the same happens with our Super Bowl, right? Especially at halftime. Right, so we have some parallels there. And then our final thought for today is there, is, there have been some long-standing accusations that uh, Bollywood has been financed by dirty money or black money or illegal money, money made from drugs and other illegal activities. I want to show you this little shop right here. It's a repair shop, a jewelry repair shop. They have repair shops for everything in Mexico. I tell you, this backpack that I'm wearing right here, the zipper broke on it. What do we do in the US? We throw it away, we buy another one, right? We have throwaway society when something is out of fashion or or it's no longer useful. Here in Mexico, they fix everything. You take it into a seamstress and she'll charge you one or two dollars and you'll have a zipper back in your backpack. I, I wanna say, by the way, that I'm not intending to badmouth the US every time I make a comparison. What I'm really trying to do is to shock the class, if you haven't traveled, out of some of the foundational assumptions that we have in our culture that we are not able to question unless we're able to get outside of that culture, which is one of the purposes of this course, comparative media. So I do want to begin a wrap up now by saying that I'd like us to remember we did have a specific focus in this class, and that specific focus was not on all kinds of media. We focused strictly, or almost strictly, on entertainment media. We could have looked at journalism, for example. We could have looked at documentaries. We could have looked at newspapers. But we didn't. We looked at entertainment, and that brought us mostly to television and film and some online stuff as well. If I, had, if I was teaching this course outside of the pandemic, we would have all been taking it here in Mexico. So still, I hope I was able to bring you some of Mexico and fit it into our discussions as we learned about media from all over the world. I hope ultimately that you know a lot more about your own media in the United States because of the comparisons we've made with other countries around the world. And finally, I want to wish you the very best for the rest of your summer, and I look forward to reading your papers. Adios for one last time.